Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Frazzled, the podcast with me, your host, Kelly Swindler. I'm still trying to stick to this on video as well. So if you are watching uh, over on YouTube, hello, hello, hello. If you are listening via your favourite podcast platform, again, hello. And for those of you that are either first time listeners or back again, you are all very, very much welcome. Frazzled is um, my uncut, unedited, unscripted podcast, uh, which those of you that have been regular listeners and have, have been here from the start, some of you have been listening since the very, very beginning of this podcast. I knew that I wanted to get another podcast out there, right? I've done podcasts before. I knew that I wanted to get one out there but found myself stressing about the editing process, the time it would take, having to interview people, having to get all of the stuff organized. But when I changed my thought process really, and just focused on letting it be easy, I didn't realize I didn't need to do any of that, right? I can just talk. What's said is said. If there's background noise, if there's dog barking, if there's doorbells going, that's the realities of, of everyday life. And so if I wanted to do it in a way that allowed me less stress, that allows me to uh, move away from my very, uh, what can still be very per perfection focused tendencies, then I could do it the way that I wanted to do it. So that's what we are. That's, that's what we're here. Today, I want to talk to you about feeling like you need to earn your rest, right? Do you feel like you need to earn your time off? And as is becoming very usual with this podcast, get my seat sorted so I'm a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but as is typical with this, I tend to kind of focus on uh, client stories or things that I'm seeing, hearing, feeling, or things that have, uh, have, have really been happening for me. And this is a personal reflection. My jackets, don't want that. Uh, this is a, a personal reflection. I um, I wanted to take August off. For the last few years, I have been taking August off, right? No client work. I have sometimes been doing some stuff, but for the most part, no client work at all throughout August. I'm away with the family. We're taking my parents away again this year. And something different clicked with me this year right August off is something that I I suppose I had been aspiring to right when I first started my business um and I've got oh I started January 2014 I had in my head almost I suppose like a, a measure of success right was for me to be able to take a full month off during the summer my sons at the time were still off, was, was still at school when I, when I started the business. And so I think I kind of had in my head, if I could take off the majority of the summer holidays, that for me would be a sign of success. And it wasn't that I would then be struggling financially or, or any of that stuff, but that I would genuinely be able to afford to take the summer off and not have to worry about income or finances, just really to be able to, to be present. So a few years ago, I started to take August off and it felt like a really big kind of success milestone, right? A milestone of success. The fact that I was in a position to be able to do this felt amazing, felt incredible, really did feel like it was a bit of a, you know, or not more than a bit, but it was a, it was a sign of success, right? I had been, I'd been doing all of this stuff. But I also realised that I had this, I don't know, concern, niggle, feeling, guilt that I should still be working. And so I have still done some work in previous years whilst I've been off. Right? And I've said I still, I've, in my head still, right, I started this by saying I might still do a few bits over August and of course a lot of that comes down to choice I love what I do 
particularly if it comes to the writing or podcasts, social media posts, doing a blog, doing an article. If I've got the idea that comes up, I like to just be able to to do that. And it's still not something that I really class as work. But I do really want to have August off. I've got a really busy September, October, November and December. I want to be able to finish the year on a high. I want to be able to finish the year with energy. I want to be coming into September as I launch the Burnout Academy, as I'm relaunching the Burnout Club. I've got my book launch coming in November. I really want to be able to be as present as possible with all of those things, not feel like I'm stressing or panicking or worrying. So I know that taking time out, taking a proper break, giving myself what I need, I know it will be a huge benefit to me. Um, I'm, I'm even as I'm talking this out loud, right, this is why it's unscripted, unedited. Even as I'm saying this, I can hear myself saying words like try. I'm going to try. And if any of you are Star Wars fans, uh, Yoda has this saying, right? There is there is no try. There is either do or do not. So even as I'm I, even as I'm saying this out loud and talking this through with you, I'm also thinking I'm using the word try a lot. And actually, I just need to make a choice, right? I need to make a make a choice, make a decision, and go with what with what I choose. So I choose. I am choosing to take August off. And that in itself actually just feels a lot lighter, right? So I'm, it's my public declaration to you all. I am choosing to take August off. That's quite nice. To take it off, right? Not trying, not might try a little bit, might do like, I am taking August off, switch off. I give myself permission in the here and now to not work during August. Oh, I'm gonna take a breath. There we go, give myself permission. But what I wanted to talk to you about today wasn't the realisation of actually trying to trying to get my head in the right place. What I wanted to be able to really share with you is that towards the end of June, I was uh, the kind of it was the last week of June, actually, and I had um, a couple of, of, of big speaking events. For one of them, I had quite a lot of time that I was spending in in the car. I was, I was driving to Wales for this speaking engagement. And I, within that thinking time and in being in the car on my own, I realized that throughout that week, I had been panicking about everything that I needed to do throughout July. And I realized that the panic was coming from wanting to take August off. So I plan my days, my weeks, my months, my quarters, my years, right? I plan all of that really well, actually. I plan my goals. I plan my time. I put my time out in. I do all of those things. And on the whole, I, I, I manage all of that really well. But there was something that had clicked in me. And I realized this had been a pattern for a number of years beforehand. It was almost like I felt... Like I, I almost like had to had to kill myself, pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And I've and I've said many times to all of you before. I, I, I do not honestly think that I would survive a third period of burnout. And I genuinely do not do not think I would. And I think I, I therefore try to avoid that as much as possible. Right, I do everything that I possibly can to keep me happy, healthy, and high performing. I have also realised that sometimes that means that I hold back and I'm going to cover that in, in, an, in an upcoming episode soon. But I realised that in order to almost justify taking August off, my headspace in this last week of, Ju of, of June was like all of the things that I felt I needed to do throughout July. And none of them were planned, right? I'm talking about things that weren't in the diary, that weren't in the plan that weren't things that I had thought about doing. 
And actually, I knew, logically, I knew that everything was in place. I knew that I had, I know that I have the foundations in place for probably 90% of the things that I'm doing from September to December. I'm already ahead of the game with all of that stuff. I know what my plan looks like for September when I come back and I knew what I needed to do throughout July. But it was like my head was not feeling safe enough to allow me to feel that just everything was okay. Right, it's okay. You're on top of it all. It's all right, don't worry. It was almost like I had been again, we talked a lot about this, right? In bit like the training and the conditioning, all of the things that we are told, right? We're told how we should think and feel and be. We're told that busy, that working hard is a sign of success, right? Work hard, play hard. That's that's the sign of success. We're told, aren't we? And we say to other people, oh, I'm taking August off. And I, um, and I, and I, I know, because I'm already hearing this through from some of my community, right? I'm, I'm taking, oh my God, yeah, well, you deserve it, don't you? Because you, you do so much, right? You work so hard, you do all of this. And so again, that like reinforces the being deserving of taking August off. And I don't need to deserve it. And I don't need to earn it. I've already, if I, you know, if I kind of think about it from the space of earning, I've already earned it because I've got my business to a point where I can afford from a time and a financial perspective to take August off. I've got the foundations in place. Everything is there. Everything is where it needs to be. Everything is happening as it needs to be. And yet there was still this part of me that thought in order to take August off, I have to push, 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 push and work, 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 work throughout July. Push myself almost a breaking point. In order to be able to deserve August off. And a reminder, right, I've been doing this work and all this stuff now for 11 years, I'm still unlearning some of this. The fact that I caught myself, even before it happened, because I could see, I could like see and think and feel what, what was going on in my head, right? I just feel I need to earn it. And then when I started to think back about some of the previous years where I've, like, I'm, I'm taking August off and I thought, oh, brilliant, right? You've, I can take August off because this is the point that I've got my business to. But I still found myself saying what I did, you know, a few moments ago, right? It's like, well, I'll, you know, I'll try to take August off, but, you know, I love my work, so I might end up doing some bits and pieces. There's like, even so, I've still been giving myself some, some wiggle room, right? I've not really been giving myself full permission to take the time off. But I also know over previous years, if I think about my kind of July and August, it's like I spend a lot of that time. So I don't do a huge amount of client work, right? A lot of my clients don't want to be doing, and they're away, I'm away. They've got things doing, some of their teams are on holiday, so they don't have the time to work with me anyway. Or, you know, so I don't do a huge amount of client work throughout July and August, never have done. In the 11 years since, or 10 years since I've had my business, I've never done a huge amount. I speak to people about proposals. I still do some of my coaching. I still do some stuff, but I'm not doing a huge amount not of client facing work. But what I've been doing over previous years is I go into like procrasta branding phase, right? Oh, let's just tweak my logo. Let's just start tweaking the website. Let's tweak some messaging. Let's change the wording of all of my social media platforms. Let's change my email signature. Let's create a load of stuff on Canva, right? To go with my social media posts. Let's decorate the office. I don't need to decorate the office this year. We've just moved, not long, moved into this space. I don't need to do that. Oh, that's done. But it's those sorts of things, right? It's like I create things that aren't actually going to move the business forward. Like changing my email signature. It's not, you know, it's not revolutionary. 
in terms of business growth. Buggering around with Canva templates on things that I can post on my social media are not going to you know, monumentally grow my business or move my business forward in any particular way. But because I am usually ahead of the game with things, it is almost so I, I, I could possibly, possibly take July and August off. And just say, do you know what, take the six weeks. We'll just take all of the school holidays off. And instead of that, I've been pushing myself over the, over the last few years to almost justify that I have crawled into August off exhausted and like, oh, my, like, yeah, you know, like I really earned it. Or was I feeling like I really, really have to work? And how many of you, how many of us do that all the time, right? I'm take, we're taking a day off. And so we do four days worth of work in the day before we take off one day. How many of you have taken a week off and have probably done a month's worth of work the week before you go and leave? How many of you have, before any kind of type of, of planned leave, right, have thought, I need to, like, I've really got this, I've got to get ahead of the game, I've got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. But actually, how many of you are like getting ahead of the game on a typical Monday to Friday. Most of the time, what you're doing, particularly those of you that are, you know, close to this point of being frazzled, right, on the brink of burnout, experiencing stress, experiencing this exhaustion and this fatigue and this tiredness, many of you spend your working week just in response mode, right? Responding and reacting because actually you're not giving yourself, you're not creating the headspace or the thinking space or the doing space within your week, right? You're literally just going from meeting to meeting, from crisis to crisis, from issue to issue. And that's how you spend your week, not being particularly productive, not being particularly effective, not implementing any of those boundaries, but literally just firefighting Monday to Friday. Yet as soon as you think, oh, I've got next week off, right? I've got to, I've got to do it. I need to plan. Like I need to get my plans done until Christmas. I need to plan this. I need to foresee this. I need to get ahead of this. I need to, you know, I need to do my handover. I've got, you know, everybody needs to know all of this stuff that needs doing. And it's almost like then we amalgamate six months worth of work into our to-do list, our handover list, our everything, because it's like all of a sudden, all of this stuff is urgent. And yet it's not been urgent for the last however many weeks or months, because all we've been doing is firefighting. And this is the first year that I've clocked that that's what I'm doing. This is the first year that I've had the awareness that that's what I'm doing. So I've thought about it a lot. Now, I, I think I'm still in, right? My, my birthday is September. Um, I will accept diamonds and chocolates and flowers, books. Um, I'm joking, but you know, my, my birthday's in September. I joke with all of my family and friends that September is my birthday month. I don't just have a day, I have an entire month. But I think because of that, and again, I, my, because I take my year in quarters, right? September is my like my like what do I want to achieve achieve in this year of my life like not not necessarily the calendar year but what do I then want to do before my next birthday what do I want to achieve in this time it's also then like the final quarter of the year right so I'm planning where I want to be by the end of the year maybe I am still stuck in that kind of um almost kind of like school year like academic year I tend to start a lot of my courses and training in September so that's always, always there. You know, I tend to start a lot of learning. So, so I think I'm, I'm kind of still there in, in terms of some of that thinking. But I also realised, as I was kind of trying to dig a little bit deeper with this, I also realised I used to get quite bored during the summer holidays, right? We'd have our family time. We'd have our family holiday. And I'm talking like way back to when I was a child, not just with, with my sons. But we'd have our family time, our family holiday. 
And then we might just be out with friends, but of course then friends would have their holidays and friends would be away with, with families. And sometimes I'd go on holiday with friends and sometimes they'd come on holiday with me, but then we might do, you know, might, might do something separate anyway. And actually six weeks of like nothing, right? I am somebody that likes to get stuff done. During the summer holidays, and particularly as I kind of got into my teens then, they would be the weeks that I would be like rearranging my bedroom. Or I would be decorating my bedroom, or I'd be helping my parents with stuff around the house. Or I would, you know, in all those kind of downtime, I never really allowed myself to be in that space of rest. Or I'd just sit and read constantly. I can remember my dad buying me the, a rolled doll collection. It was a rolled doll collection box. And like I finished the Twix in an afternoon. And so in a lot of that dance, I would like I was always doing. I would find different things to learn. I'd be soaking up on things. It's my, my brother and sister again, when I think about this, right? I, it was like I had my own, um, like my own little school. I remember my, my parents got a new shed one year. And I remember like setting it up as like a little school, right? A little book club for my brother and sister. We sat in the empty shed before the stuff got put in it. And like that was my schoolhouse. So there's something in there for me about the learning, but also from a very, very young age, clearly not being able to switch off enough, always feeling like I had to be on the go, always feeling like I had to be doing something, almost feeling like I had to be throughout August almost like preparing myself for the school year that was about to start in September, right? Always thinking ahead of what I needed to learn and what I needed to do and how I needed to get ready. Like I wanted like my new stationery, my new folders, my new notebooks, my new pens, my new pencil case, my new school, but I wanted all of that at the beginning of the summer. So that it was done, right? There was no kind of last minute rush. And I think a lot of that I'm still holding on to. And I wonder how many of you are doing the same. And for those of you that, you know, are parents, carers, guardians, for those of you that are still on that school timetable, maybe some of you work in schools or, you know, you're kind of, you're working to a similar timetable, right? Whereas it's almost like summer is the amalgamation of everything. And we have expectations about summer, right? Because when we're off, we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves and spending all this time and soaking up the sun and getting stuff done and sorting out gardens and sorting out houses and prepping for the, like there's a lot of stuff that I think we expect ourselves to achieve and do in the summer. I think we also set a lot of expectations on ourselves, right? We expect the summer holiday that we have not only spent our hard earned cash on, but we're also giving it a large proportion of our time, right? We have these ideas of what it should look like and how it should be we want to create these perfect holidays and ensure that we drink as much as possible and eat as much as possible and not sleep as much and party or do whatever it is it's almost like we feel that this has got to be the thing right that fixes us because of all of the other stress that we give ourselves for the other 50 weeks of the year and what if we just took some of that pressure off what if we didn't have to cram six months of worth of work into the week before we went on holiday. What if we just recognised that actually the week off wasn't something that we had to earn? What if, even if stuff still needed to be done, we just delegated it, right? Next week, this stuff, this stuff, and this stuff's going to come off and I'm, I'm not contactable. Do you have any questions about it now? What if we didn't feel that we had to earn it? What if we didn't feel like we had to crawl into our holiday? What if we just allowed it to be the downtime, the relaxation time, the restorative time that we needed it to be? And we took away all of the pressure. And we took away all of the stress. And just said, you know what, like, this is my time. I give myself permission give myself permission, right? Give myself permission to just enjoy my, you know, enjoy the week, whatever comes up. I'm gonna take it a day at a time, an hour at a time. Just gonna see what happens. I don't need to fill the time with loads of stuff. I don't need to earn the time. I don't need to be deserving of the time. I'm just gonna give permit myself permission to take the time and to give myself what I need within that space. 
if any of that has resonated with you today do please let me know drop me a message via linkedin or via kellyswinkler.com uh, or drop me an email kelly at kellyswinkler.com drop me an email i just wanted to share that with you right this was my that was a, a realization a moment of of awareness that i had um a, a few weeks ago and it has changed how I am navigating my July. And I do not feel that I need to crawl into August because I'm, I'm not, I'm not running on empty before I get there. I am exhausted. And again, I'm going to cover in an upcoming episode, what has, what has been happening, but it's not been so much from a work perspective. That you that, that well, that's a contradiction, Kelly. You've just said you're not crawling into it, and yet, that, yet you're exhausted. Uh, my son recently had an operation, and that's um, that's changed some of the things uh, that we've been doing, that I've been doing at home. So I'm going to cover that on the next exercise. But from a work perspective, I do not feel that I need to earn my week off. So I hope that has been useful. Thank you very much for sticking with me. As always, right, let me know if if this what, what you've discovered from this one, right? Has this resonated with you? Has something st stuck with you? Um, you, you? You know, you've been nodding along. And again, right, let me know if there is a topic that you would like me to cover um, in one of the recent episodes. I am open to your suggestions. But for now, I am going to say thank you very much for listening and or watching. Um, we're now getting to get this out on as many different platforms as possible, hopefully to take you all from frazzled to fabulous. I'm going to say thank you very much. I'll be back with you again next week. New episodes every Tuesday at 7 a.m. I'm going to say goodbye. Have an amazing week and I will be back with you next Tuesday at 7. Have a great one. Take care. Bye bye.